come to you from the capital of Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, here at the Kohl Center. It's the NCAA Midwest Regional as the top-seeded Fighting Sioux of North Dakota gets set to square off with the ECAC champions, the Princeton Tigers, next. NCAA Hockey Championship coverage is presented by Enterprise rent -A car And today we come to you here in the Midwest Regional, the Kohl Center in Madison, Wisconsin. The first game of the day will feature the ECAC Tournament Champions, the Princeton Tigers, and from the WCHA, the number one seed, the Fighting Sioux of North Dakota. That matchup up top here in the Regional Semifinal. Game two of the day will feature Denver and the home squad, Wisconsin Badgers. Great to be with you, great to see you. My name is Ben Holden, joined by Sean Richland up here in our office for the day, and Fred Pletch is ringside all day for our coverage here of this Midwest Regional. And Sean, this Princeton team, they won the ECAC Tournament. They take on a team that many believe North Dakota, the number one seed here, can win this entire tournament. North Dakota has loads of talent. They had a great season at WCHA. And not only were these, this team talented, but they got two players that are dominant. TJ Oshie is a forward. He's a power forward. He brings a lot of passion and competitiveness to his game. 18 goals, 41 points on the year. And then that's Jean-Philippe Lamaru, who leads the nation in goals against average. He's about as talented as it gets in the nets. And let's not forget about last year's Hobie Baker Award winner, Ryan Duncan. He can snipe with the best of them in college hockey, so he is certainly an integral part of this North Dakota team. Now, as for the Princeton Tigers, mentioned they won their tournament championship. They are having a record-setting season as a team. They feel they have nothing to lose here in this matchup with North Dakota, and if they're going to have some success offensively, Lee Jubinville has to lead the way. Well, Lee Jubinville is very talented. He's a crafty forward. He sees the ice incredibly well. He was the ECAC Player of the Year. Now, for this team to be successful, not only does Lee Jubinville have to play well, but Zane Kalem the ECAC MVP needs to be sharp too. We'll come back and check in downstairs with Fred Fletch and begin this Midwest Regional matchup. You are watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championship next. Johnson, downstairs we go. Fred Fletch is our ringside reporter all day. Fred, what do you have? Well, Ben, you know, four members of the Fighting Sioux. Ryan Duncan, TJ Oshie, Taylor Chorney, and Joe Finley spurned NHL contract offers so they could return and try to get the Sioux to the Frozen Four for a fourth straight year. Assistant Captain Chorney summed it up best. He said, if enough of us stick around, we have a chance to do something special. We feel we have some unfinished business. That unfinished business, of course, is closing the deal on what would be an eighth national championship for North Dakota. Thanks, Fred. Very good. And the starting goaltender for Princeton is Zane Kalemba. His number's there, and he has been red hot as of late and Jean-Philippe Lamaru leads college hockey with a 1.65 goals against average fighting Sioux in the home white Princeton in the traveling black underway here in this Midwest regional semi-final and the Tigers control it off the draw they look up the middle and Sean North Dakota there's no secrets about their team they like to run and gun and, and play sound defense. Princeton likes to do a little bit of that. It's interesting, and it will be interesting to see how that plays out for both. Well, you have two teams with a lot of speed. They play very competitive. I look for both of these teams to get the puck in early and charge with those fours on that forecheck. Buddy Sue get it in. T.J. Oshie after a down low, and Dave Haxtall told us yesterday one thing about Oshie. You will know what kind of day he's going to have on the very first shift of the hockey game. Well, he plays the body. When he comes out and plays the body, he gets his head into the game early. One of the reasons he's such a successful player, Ben, is because he can play in all fashions of the game. Not only is he good offensively, he plays solid defensively, and obviously he puts the points up. Here's Jubinville. He jumped on that loose puck there as Finley trying to play it out. But the puck's going to be whistled. And the head coach of the Princeton Tigers is Guy Godowski in his fourth season, the 2008 ECAC Coach of the Year. What progression he has had in now his fourth year as the Tigers head coach. Well, he's been a coach who's really turned this program around. They've had some tough times. They've come back. This is their first appearance since 98 in the, in the NCAA tournament with a team that just played unbelievably well in the EC double, e, ECAC tournament. And now they got a chance to Go against the big fighting Sioux from North Dakota. He seemed ready for the challenge. It's dumped into the far corner. Back there is Genoway number five. Vandeveldi's on with his line, and this is a line that could be very dangerous 
The second North Dakota line. Vandevelde with the puck, gains the line, looks deep, fires a shot, just missed right on the ice. Fighting Sue can't get to it, comes all the way back out to center. Princeton striding in after it, and it was poked in there by Brett Wilson, who is a dangerous goal scorer for this Princeton squad. Now the Fighting Sioux control, it's Jones, he gets to center, looks for an opening and sends her in, but wasn't where he needed to be, and it's icing, and he'll have to come all the way back down to the other end. Dave Hackstall trying to make it four for four, and what I mean by saying that is trying to get to his fourth consecutive Frozen Four. He is a, a, a coach and a man that is all about passion for his program. He is. He has a ton of passion in our meeting with him about his team and his program, and the word he used quite a bit was they are ultra competitive. Each and individual player and the coaching staff, they do drills all the time, all about competition. Great postseason record that Hackstall has. He's 21 and 8, 75%. Here's Princeton. They flip it out in front. And a fighting Sioux able to get there and carry the puck. Now they'll come. Kozak gives it back, sends his line mate in, falling down with a shot there. And it was off the mark there for the fighting Sioux. In the corner now. North Dakota controlling it towards the net off the mark as Columbia was ready for it. Bouncing puck side of the net. Tigers trying to get control of it down there, and they can't do it. North Dakota will sweep it back into the corner. Sue on the puck first. They'll work down low and cycle. It was set back around by Martins there, number eight. Now into the far corner. North Dakota player over there as they try to poke it free. Kozak's down in the corner, and the Tigers able to come away with a puck. Jody Peterson, he started the play, but it's turned over at the line. Chorney was there to keep it in. Now it's down in the center ice area. Zajac's down there trying to dig it free. Shots on goal in this hockey game. So far, we haven't had one on goal. Looking for our first in the contest as we've played 240 so far in the game. Tigers control it. They got a little room up the middle here. They fire the pass, and it's onto the tape of Eric Pridham there. Pridham brings it in, dumps it back. Backhand shot, nice deflection in front. That was Landis Stankovic that got a stick on it down there, right in front of J.P. Lamaru. Tigers now can't find it in the corner. It'll come to the point. It's kept in nicely back there. Nice play by Godlewski, Matt Godlewski. North Dakota now with control of it. They'll fire it in. Kalemba couldn't get out to slow it up. Radke's the first to it for the Fighting Sioux. Protecting that puck down there is Radke using the body. Now there's four players down there. Tied up, great look at it there in the corner. Princeton comes away with it. The pass up the middle, off the mark for Kevin Lorry. And the there hit in front of his own bench. Puck to the near side, free puck as Princeton tried to get it in. Now the Tigers with control. Kevin Kaiser brought it in, down low. Kyle Hagel, one of their role guys for this Princeton squad. And a whistle with 16, 18 remaining here in our opening period. And Sean, let's look at the matchup between these two teams and some things that stand out. Well, you look at Princeton, they're kind of on a roll. They've won the 16 of the last 21 games. And it's so important when you get in your tournament situation where it's single elimination that your team does well. And Princeton did just that. For North Dakota, they're a number one regional seed. Obviously, it's the first time since 2004. They got two dynamic players on their team with Lamaru and Oshie. But so far in this game, we've seen a lot of speed and a lot of pressure. A nice flow so far to the game, back and forth. No shots on goal still. Still in search of our first in this hockey game. Finley back there, big number two. He's six foot seven and 245 pounds is Finley. Here's Duncan, first time we've called his name in the hockey game. Trust me, it won't be the last. Ryan Duncan is dangerous. Finley up the middle, onto the stick of Miller. Finley will step up, he'll now settle it. First round pick of the Washington Capitals is Finley. Here is Oshie now, T.J. Oshie, dynamic and dangerous, went down. Fans in the North Dakota bench wanted a penalty, but the officials say no. Jeff Bunyan is our referee today. In the corner now, the Sioux come away with it. Oshie had it, and it was poked off his stick. Loose puck now is jumped on by Duncan. He's got some room over there. Duncan from the hash mark in front, and Columbo poked it out of there. Oshie had a chance and couldn't find it. Now here's Miller. He'll look for an opening. Columbo there, puck is loose. Came free now. Oshie and Miller down there. Tigers get control of it. Fighting Sioux able to keep it in. Genoway sent it back in deep. Princeton's captain back there, no stick for Mike Moore. And this one's gonna go the length of the ice with 15.09 remaining here in our opening period. Breaking the action here in the NCAA Midwest Regional. You're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships. 
Updating your floors is easier than you think at Menards. Improve the look of your home with beautiful new ceramic flooring. The Dunes Collection ceramic tile adds appeal to kitchens, bathrooms, entryways, and more. Only 77 cents a square foot for a per the Kohl Center here in Madison, Wisconsin. My name is Ben Holden alongside Sean Richland and Fred Pletch downstairs. Guy Godowski, this is his first experience as a player or a coach going to the NCAA tournament. He said, look, our guys just want to keep playing and they want to go to another practice on Monday. So they they, they seem loose. They're glad to be here. Obviously, they want to win, but they're, uh, they're a loose and very focused bunch. And you got to be focused this time of year. Even though they haven't been in the NCAA tournament, Ben, I like the fact that they won the ECAC tournament. It's the same type of competitive environment. You can't sit back. There's no tomorrow. You got to have a sense of desperation. Here is Rylan Kike now, the captain for North Dakota. He's the glue of their team, according to Dave Hackstall. Unanimous vote by his teammates as the captain. And Lamaru will cover up and keep that with 14 47 remaining here in this opening period of play. And there's a look at Jean-Philippe Lamoureux. His numbers, Sean, are sparkling on the season. In the final five, stop 60 of 64 for a 9.38 save percentage. Last weekend, as North Dakota was able to win one of two games in that final five in Minneapolis. Yeah, he's a decorated goaltender, obviously a Hobie Baker finalist. But for this team to be successful, they rely a lot on their eliminating high-quality chances. And John Philippe Lamoureux, when he does get the high quality chances, he's got to step up and make those saves. That was Malone that went down for the Sioux. Here comes Kozak with a shot that he ripped high and wide. Poked free back now. Kozak trying to get to it. Fighting Sioux on it. They flip it out front. Deflected. Nice keep at the line. Look out here. Robbie Bina goes down. Here's a chance. And Lamoureux comes out and challenge. And he kept it away from Pritam there. Great decision by Lamoureux to jump out of his crease. Come all the way out to almost the blue line and move the puck. So Princeton forward could not get in on him tight. Now the Tigers, they got the puck and they're moving in. Here they come, up the side. It's off the ankle there of Finley. Zajac slipped it ahead, but the pass too hot to handle for his winger up there. It'll be sent in, gloved by Lamoureux as Mike Moore, the captain, fired it in. Off the glass, North Dakota waiting, and it's whistled there with 13.50 to go. And Sean, let's look back at Jean-Philippe Lamoureux and his last exploits. Well, as you see, Princeton comes in tearing and Lamoureux makes a decision to come out, and he's sure with the puck as he gets it away from Eric Friedman. And a good job of coming out, Ben. And you got to be sure when you come out in those situations, because if you miss the puck, it's an empty net. Good decision and a good execution. 14th career postseason game for Jean-Philippe Lamoureux. Record of 8-5 and five with a 2.20 goals against and a 9.23 save percentage in the postseason. Oshie coming in, put the dunk and turned and fired and just missed. Finley will get to it. He's got plenty of time. Flipped it down in the corner. Miller, Oshie, and Duncan, they're buzzing out there. Genoway steps up down low. Genoway, one of those North Dakota defensemen. It is certainly active as Finley ripped one wide. Oshie using the body there. Gets position. Princeton, though, at center. Tiger's going to get to it. It's sent in there as Wilson fired it in as Princeton goes for the change. Coaching the seven-minute mark here in this opening period. Oshie couldn't find it, sent in deep. Oshie will give chase on this line along with Miller. Puck comes out to Jones. Jones has to retreat back to the center ice line and fire it in. North Dakota changing up here. So far, North Dakota's top line has gotten the puck in the zone, done a good job. Had one high quality chance for Princeton. When there's been rebounds, they've done a good job of eliminating the second chances. Here's Cam McIntyre, the big 6'2", 220-pound winger in the corner, tied up down there. Number 27, he is one tough customer, and he is built. Nobody can get control of it. Zajac now just chipped it out of harm's way, and it stopped a whistle, and I believe it was touched in the one of the bench areas down there with 12.29 to go here in period one. North Dakota, obviously the season has been a good year for them. they got a lot of leaders on this team, a lot of guys that are highly decorated, and we had a chance to co talk to Coach Axtell yesterday and he was talking about Ryan Duncan and, and all the awards he's had and the greatest thing he said was when he won the Hobie Baker Award last year as the best player in the country he looked at his coach and said I'm not even sure I'm the best player on my line let alone the best player in the country. He's such a humble young man is Duncan we had a chance to visit with him quite a bit yesterday and just fun to talk to good shot fired on there and a good save made by Lamoureux now in the corner. Princeton big hit delivered back there and throwing that body check back there was Robbie Bina what a story Bina is. In his fifth year as a member of North Dakota's hockey program. He's got it now. 
Slid it back now. It's controlled by Chorney. Fired it ahead. Vandeville, the open man. Late man, Bina comes in. Shot was deflected. And there's traffic in front. 11.51 remaining here in this first period of play. You are watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships. Next week on the best damn sports show, period. Feldman Imports Nissan is celebrating 25 years of outstanding customer service. From sales manager to car washer, service comes first. During our anniversary celebration, lease a 2008 Altima 2.5S for only $179 a month for 24 months. $179 a month for an Altima with more power and better mileage than Camry or Accord. 20 Final, it's Princeton and North Dakota. We're scoreless here early on in this first period. And Sean, there's Mike Moore, the captain. He's a 6'1", 200-pound senior out of Calgary, Alberta, the leader of that defense corps. He's so strong back there, 2008 ECAC Defensive Player of the Year, and he's going to have to be real tough tonight with this talented North Dakota offense. He's going to have to establish that big physical presence that we are so used to seeing from him. And I talked with Mike yesterday. He said his mom would be watching his mother, Marion. Her birthday was yesterday. And I said, my grandmother taught me a long time ago never to ask a woman her age. He said, I don't even know how old she is. So there you go, Marion. Happy birthday. Up to the line, Princeton controlling, and that shot never got through. Fired in, and Lamaru will make the stop with 11.27 remaining here in the period. Fred Pletch is downstairs. Freddie, what do you got? Well, the captain of the Tigers, Mike Moore, you talked about him. Guy Godowski said he was taking his kids to practice one Saturday morning at 6 a.m., and there's his captain, Mike Moore, running to the Borough Fire Hall. He's a volunteer firefighter, in spite of the fact he's a mechanical and aerospace engineering major. And, Sean, you know as a captain, you have to put out a lot of fires on the ice. Mike Moore does it off the guys too <laughs> nicely said Fred <laughs> absolutely right that is amazing that not only can he contribute on his team as a captain but he can find time to continue with his studies and the team <laughs> a firefighter as well pretty impressive stuff no doubt about it bouncing puck North Dakota's Oshi will get to it lost an edge there look out here comes Princeton in Bina comes back and lays the body the shot though never got through Lamaru down had it and then it came free Princeton Pinching in from the point there was Brad Schrader, number two. Back up top, one time chance, never got through it. Duncan, and Ryan Duncan finds it. Miller peels away. Miller on this top line with Oshie and Duncan. TJ Oshie. Oshie thought about it, gives it back. Miller thought about going to Duncan. Pass never got through. Duncan swiped that. It goes back to the captain, Mike Moore, who we just talked about. Pass up the middle, off the stick there of number 26, Matt Arhanis, who is one of those players you would describe, Sean, as a pest out there that really agitates the opposing team, and that's a good thing. Yeah, you got to love having a guy on your team like that who works hard and who makes the other team a little bit upset when he goes into the zone. McIntyre, who played the puck back there to our Hontas, he can do that himself. McIntyre, strong young man out there with the puck now, gets it in the corner, goes back, he's tied up back behind the net. He was tied up back there by Jake Mardo. Princeton still with some pressure. Mardo got a stick on that to knock it away. Lamaru will make no mistake here as he had the Princeton forward right there, Magnowski, right in his kitchen, and he covers up with 9.54 to go in the period. Well, very impressed with the play of this line of Magnowski, McIntyre, and Arhantas. As Cam McIntyre really is a big forward, he's a power forward at six foot one, 220 pounds, but WCHA play is known as physical play, and this may be his style of game to get out there, get gritty, do a good job in the corners, and win those loose, loose puck battles. What a year he's had. Career highs in every area. 12 goals, 18 assists for 30 points for the big fella McIntyre. Another puck is deflected out of play. The shots are 4-2 in favor of Princeton here with 9.47 left here in period one. North Dakota, the number one seed here, taking on the number four seed, the Princeton Tigers. Already seen one number one seed knocked out in this tournament last night. It happened out in Colorado Springs. Tigers control the faceoff. Puck bounced over the stick there as Radke gets it, flips it in, and Zane Kalemba, no mistake there, he'll keep that one in the glove and freeze it. 5'11 sophomore out of Saddlebrook, New Jersey. And he has been extremely hot. He's allowed just one goal in his last three games with two shutouts. In fact, three of his last five efforts have been shutouts. That's what you call red hot, especially at this time of the year. That's what you have to have. Oh, you need 
high-end goaltender at the end of the year. You cannot let the easy goals get in. The only goals that can be scored are perfect chances, maybe a tic-tac-toe pass. The goaltender has to make big-time saves. And really, I think the most important thing for goalies in the playoffs is control your rebounds. You've got to have good control on those rebounds. That was Robbie Bina stepping into his man, Kyle Hagel, there. One thing about Bina's game I've always appreciated watching him over the years. He plays at one level, and it's extremely high. Yeah, for not being the biggest guy on the ice at five foot eight, he does play the body an awful lot. And you look at the, the talent that this team has on the blue line, his physical play definitely adds another element. Kozak able to get it across the line. The shot, though, is deflected and into the netting. We've only got seven total shots in the game so far as we've played more than half the opening period so far. Are you surprised by that at this point? It's a feeling out period for these teams. You know, they haven't played each other. It, it's, it's not like they know each other real well. So they get an opportunity to kind of feel out how the other team's going to play and get into this NCAA tournament mode. You may take a period and then expect it to open up in a little bit. Oh, she back out to take this face off. He's up against number 16 out there. Brett Wilson out of Calgary, Alberta. Controlled by the Sioux. Sticked away there by Kalemba. Jubinville first to the puck. His pass, though, off the mark. And they say it was touched. No icing. Finley back to play it. Wilson gets it. Flips it in front. Turning and firing was Jubinville. And Lamaru was tested and passed the first test of the hockey game there. A tough turnover behind the net by Joe Finley. Finley as he reversed it to the wrong team. And a good opportunity for the Princeton Tigers. And Lamaru once again closes the door. Princeton, good work out of the Tigers here. They wait, late man coming. Shot though was deflected, hit Oshie in front. Oshie now sweeps it ahead for Ryan Duncan. Duncan gave it off to his line mate Miller, but it rolled off Miller's stick and it was flipped back towards the North Dakota line by Mike Moore, the captain. Shea Genaway back to get it. He's bumped into the boards there. McIntyre number 27, he was sniffing around the puck down there. That's his game. Big physical presence out there. Tigers doing a good job here. 5-3, they lead in the shots on goal department. Lamru there, right up against the pipe. Oshie now. He can be one of the more dynamic players in the country. And right there, he just drew the first penalty in the hockey game. So the Fighting Sioux will go to their first power play here in this Midwest Regional Semifinal. Back with that, you're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships from Madison, Wisconsin. Acme Tool. Chip coverage presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. 7.49 to go here in period one, Sean. A look back at the penalty that TJ Oshie was able to draw, and we'll see North Dakota going to the power play for the first time in this hockey game. Well, it's going to be a big power play for North Dakota. They're going to have to come out and take advantage of this man advantage situation. It's so important early in the game, Ben, to get these Man advantage is going in the right direction. Get shots on goal and create enough opportunities for your team where you can get the rebounds. So Mark Magnowski will serve two or less for a tripping minor. And the numbers there, Sean, North Dakota, 19%. Princeton, 85 on the PK. To be honest with you, I would think North Dakota's percentages would be a little higher than that with the talent they have with this uh, group of players that have come back this year. But things just didn't go their way all season the way they would like. North Dakota getting it in deep. Princeton, though, they find the seam and get it down the ice here on this ice surface that is 200 long by 97 wide. A little obscure size, but that's what they give us. <laughs> and that's just fine. Getaway now will carry. He'll look and find the opening and dump it in. Sue get to it first. Peterson lost it behind the net. Flipped out in front. Kept in at the line. Getaway. Patient. Kozak now in the circle, fired, and the save nicely made by Kalemba there. Swept back all the way around to the near side by North Dakota. Power play chance here with 60 seconds remaining in it right now. Genaway slows and settles and slides it across. Nice pass down, bottom of the circle to Miller. Miller. Playing catch now with Martins. Now it's Miller down low, trying to stuff it from the side of the net right on the goal line. Martins getting to it. 45 seconds left, power play chance. North Dakota first in the game for either team. They feed it up top through the Sioux. Ganaway, challenge there. Nice work by Princeton up, challenging that play. Shot, fired, score! Ripped in by North Dakota. Kozak scores! 
Williams, and he'll get a hug as all good players. It's 1-0. Well, great patience on the blue dime by Jake Genaway as he moves the puck over nicely to Andrew Kozak. And what he does, Ben, is he delays just a little bit, and this shot came in a hurry on Kalemba as he beat him high in the blocker side. Nice saucer pass across the ice. What a ripper that was by Andrew Kozak. Gets his 17th goal of the season, and you can see why he scored so many goals this year. As we look at the top view, boy, that was an absolute ripper that Kalemba did not have a chance on. 20th point of the season for Kozak, as Sean said, his 17th, his fifth on the power play, and North Dakota has struck first here in this Midwest Regional semifinal. Princeton's got to survive the rest of this period. That's a big goal for North Dakota as they come out and get the first one of the game, but Princeton cannot fall back. They got to continue doing their forechecking and pressuring North Dakota. Big hit down in the corner. The Princeton player, left side of your screen, still down. They got to blow the whistle here. You would think the puck's right underneath him now, and they have no choice. And down on the ice there, I believe it's Mike Kramer, number 22. But he is in serious pain down there, and he's still down and out. So the Princeton training staff will come out to check on him. I wasn't sure what happened there. I didn't see the replay. I know that Oshie's line was certainly forechecking with a lot of passion, and I'm not sure exactly what happened. Let's take a look at the replay here, Ben. As you see, Kramer comes in. Oh, and he got legs tangled up a little bit with Malone. Dangerous hit there. Leading with your legs. You got to lead with your shoulder. You can't lead with your legs when you're going in to hit someone. Definitely, that could have been called a penalty. Kramer, the freshman out of St. Paul, Minnesota, trying to get his bearings. It's been red hot since the calendar turned 2008, 15 of 16 points since January 1 of 08. So we certainly hope that Mike Kramer, the freshman, is all right. And there's a look at Malone over there on the North Dakota bench. Brad Malone, great genes he has in his family. And Kramer being helped by his teammates over to that Princeton bench here with 5.56 left and a 1-0 North Dakota lead. Hopefully he'll be okay and can come back on the ice. As, as you saw in the replay there, the knee-on-knee knee hits, they're, they're scary hits, and things are trying to take out of the game, that's for sure. We'll take one more peek at this, Ben. You'll see as Mike Kramer gets the puck, he's cheating out of the zone, and Malone comes and leads with his knee. See how he led with his knee there? The dangerous hit and, and really probably should have been a penalty. No call on it. Face off. Inside the Princeton zone to the right of Kalemba. Kozak, the only goal in the hockey game, came on the power play not too long ago here in the opening 20 minutes of play. Chorney, Taylor Chorney, very talented defenseman for this North Dakota team. Fred talked about Chorney and Oshie and some of the other guys that had a chance to go play in the NHL, and they wanted to come back to make a run at the national title. Controlled now by Bina. Bina gets across the line. Man going to the net. Vandeveldi. Vandeveldi there, and he's pulled down. Penalty upcoming. North Dakota is going back to the power play. 5.23 left here in the period. Well, a great job of driving the net hard by North Dakota as they take the puck wide, send Vandeveldi through the middle with all that passion and speed, and Princeton doesn't have a choice, but they have to pull him down. This sends North Dakota back on the power play. Take a look here, Ben. It's driving wide. Look how hard they go to the net. A nice pass across the crease. And North Dakota is forced to pull him down or else they have a point-blank shot on goal. And a good job by Chris Vandeveld. He drives the net with speed. He is on for this face-off. And Dave Haxtell telling us he's a big, strong horse. So strong on the puck. He's so good on face-offs. And, of course, guys like Oshie and Duncan, they get so many accolades, and rightfully so. But Vandeveld, to me, is one of the underrated players on this North Dakota team. And there's Fadoon will serve two or less. The penalty called on him. This power play for North Dakota, even though it percentage-wise was not very good this season, they have a lot of talent on that blue line, and they can distribute the puck very simply to the sides, and they're very patient with Chorney up on the top. A lot of weapons to choose from. Bina off his skate, lets it go. Vandeveldi's there. Remember the circle now comes into the dot. Vandeveldi trying to control it. There's that strength we were talking about. There's a shot up high on Colombo. It was ripped there by Duncan. Oshie swept it back for Chorney. Chorney wants it back, and it rolled off his stick. Taylor Chorney was ready to fire there. Princeton, though, able to sweep it down the ice with 125 left of the power play for the Sioux. And here come the horses for the Sioux. They're going to bring out their top line, try to get that second goal before this period ends. 
Move past five minutes remaining in the period. Play is whistled off sides. Moore with the hit there. And the North Dakota power play, it's perfect 100% so far as Oshie will make his way to the Sioux bench. That being 17th in the in the NCAA was surprising to me this season with, with Oshie and Duncan and so many good players coming back. But what matters is, are you good on special teams during the most difficult time, which is single elimination games. You need your special teams to be at their best during the NCAA tournament. Dave Haxtall talked about that yesterday. This team's so experienced, but as he put it to us, he said experience guarantees you nothing. And right what you're saying, you got to have every area of the, the hockey club working the right way this time of the year. Here's Martin, stumped it down low. Miller flipped it in front. Kozak was there, but couldn't reach it. Letting Sue get it back in deep. Martins will play it around for Miller. 50 seconds left here in the second power play chance for the Sioux. Danaway thought about it. The pass down low. Upstairs, the shot there by Kozak. He went upstairs on the earlier power play goal he scored. Kozak trying to get it through traffic. Can't. Danaway gloved it, kept it in. Nice work by him. Princeton, though, is going to release the pressure here. And another chance here with less than 30 seconds for North Dakota with his power play opportunity. We're very impressed with Shea Genaway on the point as he is so patient. He kept the puck in three times on that last shift. He's a great, great defender for this team. Duncan shot the rebound. Came right out into the slot for Vandevelde. Chorney now slows it. Here's Oshie back on for the final rush here on the power play chance. That shot and a stick broke as it was fired by Genaway. And North Dakota is going to be one for two here with a man advantage with 3.20 left here in this first period of play. Nice job of desperation by Princeton as they had a bunch of players come out and block shots here on come, that last power play. Here come Oshie in the fighting Sioux again. Oshie on the backhand protecting the puck. TJ Oshie, nice play to get it down there to Vandevelde. Vandevelde goes into the end boards, tying up there with a Princeton defenseman back there. Vandevelde flipped it in front. Oshie trying to bat in a bouncing puck there. Tough play to make, and there's a shot fired by Vandevelde. Oshie kicked it in front of himself to keep it alive. Vandevelde comes, helps out, lays it back behind the net. Duncan skating after it, and Peterson the first to get to it for Princeton. Here is Finley. He's got control of it. Finley paired up here with Robbie Pina. Two and a half left in this opening period. North Dakota, 1-0 lead. Shots are 7-6. Fighting Sue on the move. Princeton defender back there lost his stick. McIntyre to center. Trying to chop it in off the boards. Genaway came away with a puck. Here's Che Genaway. Genaway flipped it into the front. And trying to get to that puck on the move there was big number 26 for the Sioux, Kyle Radke. Breaking the action here from the Kohl Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Kozak has the only goal for North Dakota. It's 1-0, and you're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships. Presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. 2-10 left here in period number one. Princeton Tigers making just their second all-time appearance in the NCAA tournament. And the last time it happened, the late 90s, it was no easy task as the Princeton Tigers had to go into Yost Ice Arena in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And they ended up playing a Michigan team that... Uh, was on a pretty good run at that time of their hockey season. So Princeton down by just a goal here. They'll fire it in wide of Jean-Philippe Lamoureux. Moore the first to get to it. Bumped by Martins there. Genaway couldn't control it. Princeton trying to generate something here in the final two minutes here in this first period. Finley shoveled one up the wall. Kept in by Moore. He'll fire the shot. Sticked away by Lamoureux. Finley will fire it around. Kozak the goal scorer trying to get a stick on that. Chip it outside the zone. And the Fighting Sioux able to get it down as they go for a change. But it's going to be an icing call here with 94 seconds remaining in period one. And we talked to Coach Axtell yesterday, and he said his keys to his team were to have high speed, puck possession, and control Princeton's speed, Ben. And so far today, I think they've done a good job of all three of these things. They've had really good puck possession in the offensive zone, which has allowed them to get good quality chances. And of course, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they've been on the power play twice, but they've done a nice job of that. He said his team after that loss against Denver in the semifinals, that shot's fired through the blue paint area wide. And that's deflected out of the way. He said his team was flat out angry after the way they played against Denver and the fact that they didn't win the game. And now he knows his team, they take that 
business-like approach that they always do, the focus they have as that's flipped out in front and goes all the way down the ice. It's just incredible, the, 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 the focus and the, the determination that their hockey program has. And they've been consistent throughout the years since Dave Haxtell, and before he's been there, he talks about the passion of the program. And that's why guys like the four we mentioned earlier in the show come back to play and didn't go to the NHL, because they want to have a chance to play for a national championship. Chorney made it ahead for Ryland Kite. He'll send it in and go after it. Gives the defenseman Peterson a bump there, and now it slips all the way through center. And we're going to come back down inside the Princeton end of the ice here with 39 seconds remaining in this opening period. Princeton coming into this tournament and won the ECAC championships, and they're a team that, sure, it's a little different program for them because they don't make it to the NCAA tournament every year, but this is not a team that is not talented. This is a talented team with a lot of really good hockey players. It's very difficult for, for uh, to get into the ECAC tournament and win it, and not only that, but they had played some tough competition all the way through. So people who didn't think this four seed would be capable of playing North Dakota the way they are, they have been a talented, talented team throughout the season. In fact, they have won. Princeton has 16 of 21 coming into this game. And Icing called again here. And the five games they haven't won have all been one goal losses. We told Guy Godowski that yesterday. He said, are you serious? I said, yeah, every, every one of those games, all five have been one goal losses. And his team in that stretch has outscored its opponents 73 to 38. It's just a one goal deficit. It's the opening period. You got to figure Princeton, they came out with some nerves, I would think, Sean, being on this big stage. Oh, absolutely. This is a different, different game for them playing in the Kohl Center, which is a beautiful arena, and they have to come out they continue to get shots on goal. There's a good shot right there as Lamaru was in position to make the stop. And coming up in our first intermission, we'll have some of the Hobie Baker candidates that are here. There are three of them. In fact, all three will sound off. We'll have an interview, Fred Will, with Mark Chorney, the father of Taylor Chorney, the fine defenseman for the Fighting Sioux. And our first period highlights and stats coming up here in about 15 seconds here from Madison, Wisconsin. Jubinville has it fired. It was off the leg there of Finley. Tough to get anything by Finley. He is just enormous. Good save made. Puck is loose. Lamaru with a great stop. They throw it at him again. And Oshi comes away with it. Now Duncan. Time will expire. So a great flurry and a great finish by Princeton here in this opening period. And Lamaru keeps it 1-0 after 20. Hey, take a look at the replay in front. Lamru dives to make a big save. Bean is there to help him out, but Princeton continues the pressure. So close to going in is big, big forward for Princeton. Cam McIntyre was there to try to pound that in, and Lamaru was sharp to stop that one. So 20 minutes in the books here in this Midwest Regional, our semifinal, our first of the day. And the number one seed, the North Dakota Fighting Sioux, they are on top of the number four seed, Princeton by a score of 1-0 after 20. Downstairs we go, Fred Pletches with a goal score for the Fighting Sioux, Andrew Kozak. Thanks, Ben. Andrew, your 17th goal of the season on the power play, walk us through it. Uh, che just made a nice play to me up from the point that I don't know if they were uh, really expecting that. I tried putting it on net and fortunately it went in. Now I know you've worked awfully hard this season on your shot. Uh, 12 goals as a freshman and sophomore, and tell us how hard you've worked in that shot. I go pretty much every morning back at school with uh, one of the coaches, Coach Dane Jackson, and just kind of working on quick release and uh, anything I can do to get my shot better and quicker. Okay, thanks for doing this. Back after you, Ben. Fred, thank you very much, and thank you to Andrew Kozak as well. So after 20 minutes, the number one seed, North Dakota, leads number four seed, Princeton, by a score of 1-0. You're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships. Back with our first intermission after this. Here in Madison, Wisconsin, now 10 years old. And North Dakota with a 1-0 lead as we're set to begin the middle period of play. And Ryland Kipe, the captain, the senior out of Radville, Saskatchewan. And Dave Haxtall said he is the glue of our hockey team. He doesn't score a lot, but he does so many things that keep this North Dakota team together. He was unanimously voted the captain by the players. What an honor that must be. Oh, what an incredible honor that is to be the, the captain of the North Dakota Fighting Sioux and not only be the captain, but be unanimously voted as a captain. He's a leader. He's a great penalty killer. Coach said, you know, this guy can kill penalties. He can play in any situation, but he's taken a role as a leader on this team, and that's what impresses him the most. And to this team, you got to have good leadership to win in this tournament. He does score some big goals, does Kite. Three career game winners in the postseason. 
He had the game-winning goal last year when North Dakota met Michigan in the opening round. It was a wild contest. It was an 8-5 final, but Ryland Kite did some big-time scoring in that game. So the fighting Sioux here. Shots after the opening, 20. Princeton with 10, North Dakota with 7. The score reads 1-0. North Dakota, Kozak is 17th for Mardo and Genaway. The assist on the play. Here comes Bina, fired it off the side of the net. Did Robbie Bina. Robbie Bina is going to get to it first here for the Sioux, and he'll just softly lay it around for TJ Oshie. Oshie with a little bump there down in the corner. Miller trying to help out. Swept away there by Princeton, but North Dakota keeping it inside the zone. Right in front, the flick, and oh, what a poke check down there to keep that away as Duncan was right there in prime scoring position. Swept back around. Oshie sent it back there to Miller. Peterson comes in. Oshie bodied him, and then Oshie got banged into the end boards there. Now Princeton, they'll come away with the puck. It was controlled by Kaiser on the initial. Carry out of the zone. Princeton down 1-0, and on the move, in deep. Off a stick, Taylor Chorney chopped it around. Tiger's gonna keep it in. It was off of Ryan Duncan. Duncan now up the middle. Kite, though, couldn't knock it down out of midair. Kite, though, lays on the body there. Here is Wilson. Wilson. Down low to Jubinville. Jubinville threw it in front. Here's more. The captain fires. Blocked by Ryland Kipe. There's some of what we were talking about right there from Kipe. Great job by Kipe going down, taking away the angle on the shot through. Princeton made a mistake there. Jubinville and his counterpart dro drove the net instead of Mike Kramer drove the net instead of one of them laying back then. Someone's got to drive hard and someone's got to stay high so a pass can be made. Lamaru made that pad save on... Mike Moore, let's go downstairs, check in with our own Fred Pletch, who had a chance to talk with Dave Haxtall during the intermission. Well, Dave Haxtall told us yesterday the mood with his fighting Sioux business life. And before they came back onto the ice, all Dave Haxtall said to his team was raise the level, boys. He stood there and he looked like a foreman as his work crew filed onto the ice, punching in, headed back to work. The message to the Sioux, raise the level, even though they lead one nothing, guys so important to come out in this period for North Dakota and as as coach said make sure you come out with some passion and some energy because don't let Princeton get back in the game continue to raise the expectation of your team icing called here guy Godowski's team will have to win a face off in its own zone here at the NCAA Midwest Regional my name is Ben Holden alongside Sean Richland Fred Pletch it's number one seed North Dakota number four seed Princeton great to be with you and it's great to have you with us wherever you're watching today Princeton, they are wearing the black uniforms. North Dakota, they are the top seed in the regional, and they wear the home whites. Princeton trying to get it out on the stick there. Left wing side, Ben into the middle. McIntyre trying to find it. Martin's got back, and he slipped it ahead for the goal scorer. Kozak, Andrew Kozak. Gets it in deep. Back there is Kevin Crane for the Tigers. Tied up down there by Malone. Squirts free now. Reflected off a stick uh, was McIntyre up the middle. Icing called 17, 46 to go in the period. And Sean, here's Andrew Kozak with a ripper. Well, Andrew Kozak gets a great pass from Shea Genoway, and he buries it top shelf over the blocker of Zane Kalemba in perfect shooting position. And he got that wrister off awfully quick to put his team up 1 0. Only goal in the hockey game, 17th of the season for Kozak, and on the power play. Getting it done once again is Kozak, his fifth power play tally of the season. Princeton trying to get the equalizer here. Jones skating back after it there with Eric Pridham, number 11. Controlled now. Princeton out in front, the deflection there, the redirected chance there, never really got to Lamaru. And look out at center is stepping up was Peterson, and he wiped out Radke there. Sue now trying to get control of it. Swept towards the corner there, never got through. And now Zajac will carry the line. He'll lay it in. Captain Mike Moore back there, played it out of harm's way. Moore will skate to it. He is lined up and drilled. Princeton carries across the line. Here come the Tigers. They had a man coming on the slot there. It was Landis Stankovic, number 10. North Dakota off the glass. Funny deflection, though, goes right to Princeton. Captain Moore. Trying to connect there with a the centerman. Wilson was up the middle there. On the stick now, a fratten for North Dakota. Off a of skate, Moore gave him a bump. Then we're seeing a little more energy from Princeton. They're doing a good job of forechecking as Landis Stankovic and his line came out in that shift and just came in with a lot of pressure. It did a good job 
of going in and checking the first defenseman so they could get a turnover. Duncan trying a little nifty move there, and Lamoureux had to flex with the right pad, make the save. Here's Chorney now. Taylor Chorney flips it over. Duncan, man, coming late. Shot never got through. It was Miller. He was wound up hard, but he couldn't get the shot through. Now the Tigers come back. Wilson, he is a goal scorer for this Princeton team, but that is deflected out of play, and the clock stopped with 16.07 left in the period. And Ben, you notice as Brett Wilson carried that puck down the boards, big Joe Finley was there with that stick of his. He stuck it out there, and there's no chance you're gonna get a shot through as Joe Finley's stick is about as tall as you are, Ben. <laughs> exactly, and Finley at six foot seven, six ten on the skates, and as, as far as Wilson goes, who just had that chance, Guy Godowski said Willie will do anything he can. He's a pure goal scorer. He'll do anything he can do to try and find the, find the net and light the lamp. That's important to have guys with a nose for the net. That shot, Lamaru made the save. A little more pep in the step here. I think Sean out of Princeton here to start this middle period. Genaway steps in, fakes, holds, still got it down low, threw it in front, never got there. Deflected, Genaway getting back. Tigers on the move. That shot kept out of the net, fired there by Brandon Kushnerick, number 19. Finley pressured back there by Kaiser. Genoway trying to pass up the middle for Kite, goes the length of the ice. Kalemba quickly back the other way. Kalemba, nice feed onto the stick there. Tigers coming in up high, right into the crest there on the North Dakota jersey of Jean-Philippe Lamoureux. Breaking the action here from the Kohl Center in Madison. You're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships. Welcome back here to Madison, Wisconsin, here in the Kohl Center, North Dakota, with 15-24 to go in period two leads. The Princeton Tigers by a score of 1-0. And we're honored to be joined now by a former Princeton Tiger and current member of the Anaheim Ducks, a Stanley Cup champion. George Peros is joining us from out west, Southern California. George, thanks for doing this. Uh, what are your thoughts so far with a one nothing hockey game and your guys down? You know, I'm a little jealous right now, actually, because uh, I can't watch the game. I just finished practice. I'm uh, driving home as we speak. So uh, the first update I got was uh, the score from you guys. <laughs> George, talk a little bit about your career as a Princeton Tiger and, and what it, how it helped develop your game. Well, uh, my career at Princeton was uh, an interesting one. We, we had a couple of good years when I first got there and a couple of not so good ones in the last two years. So. Um, Coach Kudowski has really turned the program around. But I, uh, I know we did a lot of losing when I was a junior and a senior, so we had some tough years, but it was a great place to play, and uh, I don't regret any of it. George, curious to get your thoughts on uh, if you had any communication with uh, the team as they come in, the Tigers do, and the shot was deflected. Did you have a chance to talk with the guys at all this week or send any kind of email messages to them? Uh, I did send in an email to uh, Coach Godowski. I'm probably closest with him. Uh, all the other guys uh, that I've known in the program have graduated on, so I know a few of the guys whose name only uh, right now, but I've been keeping tabs on them, and uh, they're having a hell of a year. Hey, George, your style of play now, not exactly what you see out of college as you're leading the NHL in penalty minutes. So that, I, I guess you must have practiced a lot with your buddies scrapping it up. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of opportunity to fight in college, but uh, that was definitely a role that I uh, came into when I turned pro. And uh, as I understand, my, my friend uh, Kevin Westgarth is uh, passed, I passed the course down to him because he's doing a hell of a job at the same uh, position. So it's good to see some guys come out of Princeton and having success. In, uh, in the physical side of things as well as, uh, you know, the other side. Absolutely. Obviously, the academic side is such a big thing with the Ivy League schools, and I'm sure, uh, you know, it's been well documented, your, your academic background. Do you talk much with your fellow teammates? Uh, I know Chris Kunitz is a college guy on your team. Do you guys ever get a little talk uh, about uh, the college game? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, we were watching the Michigan game yesterday before we, uh, before we played our game last night. So uh, the college guys are still paying attention. Uh, we uh, we give some shots back and forth to one another, and uh, it's good camaraderie. And, and uh, you know, there's plenty of college guys still playing right now. Well, George, you would have been proud of Zane Kalemba because he just denied last year's Hobie Baker winner, Ryan Duncan, on a breakaway here as we've moved past the six-minute mark here in the second period. One more thing, and we'll let you go. Can you just talk about uh, your experience and, and the, uh, the, the education and the hockey experience you had at Princeton here, and we'll let you go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was uh, an unparalleled experience. I don't think he could get anywhere else. Um, I, you know, I was really proud to go to Princeton and, and continue to play hockey afterwards. But being there, being a student athlete, uh, 
was certainly something uh, that helped me straighten my, you know, my uh, preparation for the, for the life afterwards, uh, after hockey. Uh, I, I hope that uh, it'll pay, pay out in space. Uh, it was a great experience, and uh, it's an awesome school and a uh, great place to play if you have the opportunity. George, we really appreciate you taking some time and doing this, and uh, we wish you and uh, all the all the Princeton Tigers out there uh, the best of success here the rest of the hockey game. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Go Tigers. All right, there you go. George Peros, the member of the Princeton Tigers in the late 90s, early part of this decade, and now for the Anaheim Ducks won the Stanley Cup last year, and we appreciate him taking some time to join us here. And his team on cue has really turned it up here as they're doing a good job of forechecking and a big save by Kalemba that kept him in the game. We had a chance to speak with Matt Lindsay, the assistant coach for Princeton Tigers before the game. And he said Kalemba has made some fantastic saves, kept his team in the game. And those are the type of saves you need your goaltender to make. A breakaway opportunity for the number one player in college hockey last year. Well, Princeton has had a record-setting year this season, Sean, in every virtually every aspect. And here we're looking at the the years going back, and Guy Godowski has really turned it around. He has. You look at the when he came in in 04 and 05, it was his first season. They had eight wins, and that is a miserable season as a coach because you come in, you want to have some effort. He brought them all the way to 21 wins this season. That has a lot to do with coaching because those freshmen that were there the first year, Ben, they're now seniors on this team. And that's the same crop of talent, so a great job of coaching by the staff. And give Guy Godowski a lot of credit and the administration of Princeton for hanging with it. Yep, young, energetic coach. He's well-liked. His players absolutely love him. And they have such unity, he told us, Godowski did. Tigers trying to tie this hockey game as we move up to the eight-minute mark here in second period of play. McIntyre laid it back. There's a shot, and Lamaru was able to find it. Peterson with the shot from the point. Chorney now trying to get it by the Princeton player back there, and he did. It was Arhantis. Now the Sioux come out, Martins carries, dumps it back. Here's Bina, snaps a shot. It was knocked away there by Kalemba. Poked out of there by Landis Stankovic, number 10 for the Tigers. Native of Trochu, Alberta. You want to talk about someone that's taken full advantage of everything at Princeton. It's him. He's a Rhodes Scholar. Here is Robbie Bina now. Controls and off the boards. Racky bump. Zajac now with the puck. Shot never got through. Played nicely back there. Was Zajac by the Princeton Tigers. Finley looks up the middle. Zajac got a stick on it. Columba kept it out of harm's way. Tigers control it. Laurie started the play out for Princeton. And to Stankovic, number 10 down there with Genaway. Those two trying to dig it free. It comes free to Zajac. And Zajac's feet right on the tape of Radke. Radke at the end of the shift just rolls it in. And Columba with 11 minutes and change remaining covers up. And a break here from the Kohl Center in Madison, Wisconsin. North Dakota continues to cling to a 1-0 lead here in Madison. Madison, Wisconsin, North Dakota on top of Princeton, 1-0. We go downstairs rinkside. Fred Pletch with a special guest. Fred? Well, thanks, Ben. With the athletics director of Princeton, Gary Walters, who played in the Final Four basketball, was also on the basketball selection committee. But here he is at the NCAA hockey tourney. How's that, Gary? It's uh, great. Uh, I've spent the last five years administering the basketball uh, tournament. But being here in person with our hockey team is a whole different experience, so I'm really enjoying it. Well, Coach Guy Godowski has certainly taken the Princeton hockey program to new levels. When did you know you made the right call with Guy Godowski? Well, almost, I think, from the, from the time we interviewed him. Uh, Guy is uh, a man of such incredible integrity, and he, and he commands respect. He's just got this uh, natural leadership ability, and, and that stems from his work ethic and his uh, uh, commitment to the kids and to our program. We couldn't be luckier to have him as a role model for our program. And as the coach says, it's a short list of guys who've scored ECAC championship game-winning goals and are also Rhodes Scholars. Landis Stankwich, you have to be awfully proud of that young man. We are absolutely proud of Landis. He, he has just been a uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, reflection on our university, our uh, athletic department, and our team. Gary Walters, Princeton Athletics Director. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, Fred. Okay, back upstairs, guys. Thanks, Fred. We appreciate it. Thanks to Gary, too. And right now, his hockey team, Princeton hockey team, trailing 1-0 as Oshie brings it in. Forgot the puck, though. And it's played away from T.J. Oshie. While Fred was talking with Gary Walters there, we saw Big Finley lay a big body check at center. I believe it was on Moore that he crushed in the neutral zone. Chorney now slips one ahead. Watkins going far side, deflected though. 
Ryland Kite cycles. This line can be so dangerous with their size and their strength, Sean, and their just their determination in every aspect. Here's Vandevelde. Vandevelde had it poked away. Jumping on that loose puck is Ryland Kite. Swept it back down deep for Watkins. Watkins watched down there. He gets away, and he's now he's tied up by Kevin Kaiser. Vandevelde coming in to try to use the size down there. He's got Puck is slipped out of there. Goes right to Princeton, and Kushnerik brings it up. Kite takes a look off the glass and goes by the Sioux bench. Vandevelde, the end of his shift, in pressuring the puck. Good work out of Vandevelde. Now it's controlled back there by Princeton. Tigers feeling some heat there. Kozak in on the forecheck. Schrader slipped it ahead. Arhantis out there trying to find the puck. Number 26 for Princeton. We'll find it this time. Had a man going to the net. It was Wilson. Wilson had a chance there, but that pass just didn't get to him. Wilson, good hands by him to intercept the pass. Threw it in on Lamoureux. Tigers were sweeping in deep out front, and they were trying to connect again where our Hontas and Wilson. Good job of pressure again by Princeton. They need to get the puck to the net, though, Ben. They're doing a good job of controlling it. Once they get it in the zone, but they got to get the puck to the net with some pressure and traffic in front of Lamu. He's too good of a goalie to shoot from the outside. Shots are 16-10 favor of Princeton. And Hontas kept it alive. Now it comes back to the captain, Moore. Mike Moore coming in, didn't get the shot through. Good defense back there by Genaway. Blocking that shot. Here's Finley. And that big bone-crushing body check at center on Moore, the last shift out. They look at this D these two D partners, Joe Finley and Jay Genaway. Very impressive. Different styles of play. Finley, obviously a big man who plays the body. Genaway, more of a shifty positional player. Out in front, Princeton there, and couldn't get the shot away. Tigers trying to find it. Two North Dakota players there, and the Sioux able to poke it outside the line. Well, you got to take advantage of those opportunities. Princeton had a glorious chance, a mistake by Genaway behind the net, and they couldn't cash in on the opportunity. Here's Wilson now, working against Genaway. Wilson flipped it back, McIntyre. He'll get to it, fired it in front, Lamaru there. And good work out of this line. They have been very good in this game. 7.37 left here in the second. You're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships. Nothing, our score. North Dakota on top of Princeton, 7.37. Remaining here in the middle period of play. The only goal coming off the stick of Andrew Kozak. And it came back in the opening period of play. And, Sean, we've talked about Joe Finley, just an enormous young man. And he had a big hit a couple of minutes ago. And he is certainly a customer. You better know where he's at when you're an opposing forward coming inside the zone trying to work against him. Yeah, he's a big guy. He eliminates people with his body. He's got good stick position, too, Ben. When you're coming down on a defender who's that big, it's very difficult to get shots through because he gets his stick in the shooting lane every single time. Very similar to Zidane Chara for the uh, for the Bruins. I think they use the uh, the exact same stick in terms of the length of it. There's Watkins tied up down there. Comes free and now Peterson got it intercepted by Ryland Kite. Peterson striding after it, getting there before Vandevelde. Now the Tigers come out. They got some jump here, but they're off sides on the play as it was. At the line, Kevin Kaiser offsides as Hagel carried the puck. Now, Sean, we're going to take a look at Joe Finley's stick and Ryan Duncan's stick, and the difference is uh, it's, it's over a foot. <laughs> it's incredible, the difference in the length of these two guys' sticks. As you see him lining up there, Duncan's obviously on the left, and the big man, Joe Finley, on the right. It is a good foot difference between the two sticks, and that is an example of why it's so difficult to get shots through on Finley. Yep. Inside of seven to play here in the second period. Just a one goal North Dakota lead. Here's Oshie. Carries it in. Jubinville back on him. And Sean, you and I were talking during the break that we haven't really seen Jubinville out there a whole lot. But he's out there now as Duncan was in front. And he went down. Now the Tigers come away with it. Here is Wilson. Wilson laid it back. Back at tire. He can let it fly. Oshie. For Ryan Duncan. Duncan. Oshie will go to the net. Duncan. Trying to go back to T.J. Oshie. Right now, Ben Prince is doing a good job of back pressure, getting it forward back to eliminate the opportunity by the drop pass as Oshie got into the shooting zone, but a good job of back checking eliminated the chance. McIntyre, that last shot, and there is 
Finley, who we talked about, Lamaru. But I'll tell you what, Sean, I'm impressed at McIntyre. He can absolutely fire the puck. He can shoot the puck. He's a big four, and I really thought starting this game, this would be his kind of game. He's a power forward. He does a good job of going through bodies and winning those puck, those open puck advantages. He does a good job of that. Chance for the Tigers, a one-time chance, though, the puck off the heel, the stick there. So important to win those 50-50 pucks. If you can win those pucks, you got a chance to, to win the game. If you, more times than not, you get the puck and you can get to the net. It's a huge advantage for your team. Stankovic down in the corner, tight quarters there. Set up his line mate. Here's more. More shot never got through. It's still loose. Poke three. Malone tangled up, and more is gonna get a penalty. He tied up and wrapped up Malone too much. So North Dakota. Heading back to the power play. It'll be their third in the hockey game, Sean. There will be three penalties for Princeton here and none so far for North Dakota. As you look at the play, as Moore's battling for the puck on the blue line. Maybe we'll get another look at it there as it was kind of tough to see as Malone was fighting for it on the blue line to try to get the puck out of his zone. Here's a better look as you see Moore falling down. He's going to sit in the box for two as this powerful North Dakota power play is going to head back to the man advantage. Captain Moore in there will serve two or less. 5.45 left here in the middle period. North Dakota got its only goal, the only goal in this game. With the man advantage, Kozak connecting. Good work here on a Princeton. The chance in front, Lamaru down. What a stop there. Another chance. And the Tigers short it with a furious pace to their game. And they're robbed by Lamaru. Great goaltending by J.P. Lamaru. He did a nice job of getting all three saves on that play. Huge saves for his team. Oshi settles it. Up top, Chorney. Senior Bina. Chorney snaps a shot in. It's blocked and cleared. Swept out of there by Godlewski. Mark Bignowski did a good job for Princeton of being patient, trying to outweigh J.P. Lamoureux. But Lamoureux, wow, was he quick across that crease to make that save. We are going to see Magnowski in a different light in our intermission. And uh, apparently he's quick at everything he does. <laughs> Man alive. What a couple of chances. Here's Finley. Had it wound up, ready to fire. And it was... Touch with a high stick there, waved off as it was controlled by Princeton. Tigers try to get it out, they do here. Princeton doing a much better job this period on the PK. They've done a good job of forcing the play, making North Dakota get the shot through and having a body in the lane so it's not a clean shot through. Inside of 40 seconds left in the North Dakota power play chance. Duncan trying to glove it down. Tigers, Taylor Fadoon, he's got it. He's got a man ahead, he's gonna wait at the line. Fadoon carries it in. Fadoon got right through and got another shorthanded shot for the Tigers. And we're going to take a look back now, Sean, at Magnowski, who had two terrific chances earlier. Mark, Mark Magnowski wants the patience here. Just grabs control of the puck. And Lamaru just does the splits across the crease. He stays square to the puck. Watch him stay square to the puck as he goes across the crease like a cat. Big saves. Wow, that's impressive goaltending. That's why J.P. Lamaru is a finalist for the Hobie Baker Award. That'll make his dad proud, a one-time North Dakota goalie in his own right. And Lamaru so far here today has been tested plenty. 23 saves so far in the game. Yeah, he's been sharp. That, those were big saves because that would have tied the game up. That keeps your team in the game, or ahead of the game, rather, and having an opportunity to on the power play with a man advantage. Final 15 seconds to go in this North Dakota chance. Here's oh, she fired, and he was going glove side. And he let her go, but he missed the target. Sue will control it. Duncan, he'll fire one off an ankle. Ryan Duncan trying to find it. Oshi. Power play has expired. Duncan gets it down and scores! Ryan Duncan took the feed from Oshi, and it's 2 nothing North Dakota! Well, Ben Duncan does a great job of finding the dead space in the ice. Princeton lost him out there. They couldn't find him on the back door. T.J. Oshie lays a perfect saucer pass right on his tape. And Duncan goes over the glove of Kalemba as Kalemba went down a little bit early, as we'll see on this replay. And watch, Duncan's just in a dead space. That is an absolutely perfect pass by T.J. Oshie. And Kalemba went down and couldn't get up. Quick enough the time, and that's just an easy goal for Duncan with that quick shot, as there was too much net for him to see. So Ryan Duncan connecting. He gets his 15th goal of the season. 
And talking to him yesterday, just humble young man, so much fun to talk to as they're getting a little ice repair done in the corner to the right of Kalemba. I said, when was it that you really felt like you wanted to be a member of North Dakota's hockey program. He said, I was in eighth grade and went to a game down there and just fell in love. He's from Calgary, Alberta, and he has produced his 130th career game. Young man has never missed one in his career. That was a great job, a goal scorer's goal. Kalemba was expecting the one-timer. That's why he came across the crease on the ice. Duncan outweighted him and lifted it up over his glove side, and that is a huge goal for the Fighting Sioux. 21st career postseason game for Duncan, his 11th goal to go with 11 assists. And you're right, partner, it is a big goal. 2 nothing as Lamaru had those two just enormous stops when his team was on the man advantage. Princeton putting some pressure on, shorthanded to keep it 1-0. Here come the Tigers. Jubinville in front. He got a stick on it, missed the net. Quick feed from Wilson there. Mandeveldi in the corner. He's going to get to this puck. Approaching three minutes to play here in this middle period. North Dakota up 2-0. Big hit down below us. Moore there with a shot to Malone. Stankovic couldn't reach it. Now we'll find it. Watch by Martins. Stankovic will get it back now. Surveys and makes the smart play. Cycles it back along the wall. Moore was ready there. High slot, but he couldn't reach it. Malone striding after it here. Kozak's got it, he's got a line mate caught about 20 feet inside the zone. Stankovic now. Bobby Bina back first. He's given a bump from behind there. No harm done. Genaway will lift it off the glass around the other side. Slowed by Genaway. Brings it in near side corner. Kozak down there. Kozak getting the corner down there by Godlewski as the puck is tied up down there. And a stoppage. 2-12 remaining here in our second period of play. Ryan Duncan comes through and makes it a 2-0 North Dakota lead. You're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships. Com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Great to have you with us here from the Cole Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Our first game of the day between the top-seeded Fighting Sioux of North Dakota and fourth-seeded Princeton. Princeton down by a pair, but Sean, one thing they've had a knack of doing really all season has been scoring goals in bunches. So I don't think a 2-0 game is Lamaru made another big stop right there. Yeah, they had done a nice job all season long of scoring goals in bunches. And that is a great term because goals do come in bunches. Vision in that far corner. It's Moore now. Carries it more extremely active back there. And such a big part of that Princeton defense, but he brings an offensive game to it as well. Ryan Duncan, the goal scorer, couldn't get to it. Shoveled back in deep by Princeton. McIntyre back there with Finley. A couple of big boys. Finley comes away with a puck this time. Ahead to Miller. Oshie now jumps on the loose puck with 70 seconds left here in the period. Oshie's feed sent in deep on Miller. Taylor Fadoon back to play the puck. Less than a minute left here in our second period of play. Captain Moore now to center. Around Kite didn't get it in deep. That play offsides. And 48 and a half seconds left in the period. My name is Ben Holden alongside Sean Richland here at the Cole Center, Madison, Wisconsin, number four, Princeton, number one, North Dakota. Fred Pletch is downstairs along with us for this contest and the Denver, Wisconsin game as well. So here is a look at our region. North Dakota, Princeton, Denver, Wisconsin coming your way later tonight here from the Cole Center. Twenty-four to twelve are the shots in favor of Princeton. Looking for number twenty-five out front. Kaiser fell down, but he draws a penalty, and Taylor Chorney will serve two or less. Well, good job by Kaiser in front of getting body position on Taylor Chorney, and Chorney didn't really have much of a choice. He had to take him down, as Kaiser would have had a free opportunity in front of his goalie. We'll take a look at the replay here. Watch what Kaiser does, Ben. He shields the puck with his body from Chorney, and Chorney has no choice but to take him down from behind. As Kaiser was all alone in front of Lamaru. Princeton going to the man advantage. Their first in the hockey game. North Dakota's had three opportunities on the power play. Kaiser, the sophomore, doing the work in front. 15 points on the year for him. 
Taylor Fadoon trying to flip one in front. Wilson was out there. Oshi first to it, opening Duncan there. Ryan Duncan, one already in the game. Laid it back. Genaway, Redline trying to find it. Wilson instead for Princeton has it. Three fighting suit players back. Lamaru gloved it. Then trying to sweep it out of there. And then they fire it right back through there. That was Jubinville. Nearly cost Lamaru on that play. Yeah, almost an opportunity. Lamaru trying to do a fancy play with his stick. Almost cost him empty net goal. So 40 minutes in the books here from Madison. Landis Stankovic on the right of the screen there, along with Wilson. And the Princeton Tigers will head to the room. Trailing by two and coming up in our second intermission. Mark Magnowski, indeed Cube. You will want to stick around for that. It is a very entertaining feature on the forward from Princeton. We'll also have a look at Denver, Colorado in two weeks in the NCAA Frozen Four. But first, we have to decide our first semifinal of the day here in Madison, Midwest Regional, North Dakota. The top seed, one of four in the tournament. 2-0 they lead in the third underway. But Sean Princeton here with a minute 20 of power play time to work with. Torney's in to serve the penalty. So Princeton is going to get back into it. They got a great chance here. And they do, they have fresh ice, a nice clean Zamboni ice surface. Look for them to try to get the pucks to the net with some traffic there. Jubinville carried it in across the line. He goes into the corner. Comes free now. Princeton, though, there. Up top. Fadoon's shot was blocked nicely by Watkins. He'll make his way off. Here's the captain, Moore. Slides it for Jubinville. Lead Jubinville. Up top, Fadoon sends it in. Lamaru gloved it. And a quick whistle there from the referee, Jeff Bunyan, as Lamaru skated away. We're just 36 seconds into this third period. Yeah, that kind of shot's not going to work on J.P. Lamaru. A wrist shot from the point with zero traffic in front. He'll take, he'll take a bunch of those throughout the game. He is a great goaltender. You need to get a body in front of him. Make sure that they cannot see the puck. Lamaru, 25 victories this season. 1.65 goals against to lead the country. Save percentage. Outstanding, he's second in the nation there. Here's the shot, and that one hitting some iron down there. Tigers on it. Not for long, though. Genaway, he'll skate up. Smart play from Che Genaway there as he sent it in. Good job by Jordy Peterson on the blue line, delaying the shot, continuing along the blue line, and then getting the shot through on Lamaru. That was a good job on their, on their defensive line. And the Tigers and Lamaru again with a great burst there from Matt Arhantis. Well, chances are not the problem right now. Princeton is getting the opportunities. That guy, someone's got to step up and bury the puck. 27 shots they have thrown at Lamaru. He's stopped every one of them so far. Puck's out of play here. 18.39 to go in the period. And just five seconds remaining in the minor penalty to Taylor Chorney. As Lamaru has been dynamite here today. Well, he's been the difference in this game, Ben. He's done a good job of controlling his rebounds, pushing them to the corner. You look at their penalty kill this season was six in the NCAA at 88%, which is pretty good. There's a big reason why <laughs> Joe Finley out there on the ice is a big man, and it's tough to get the pucks through that crease with his stick in the way. Final seconds have ticked away here, and Chorney back out of the ice for the fighting suit. 90 seconds into this third period. Princeton down 2 0. Trying to strike here and inch a little bit closer. Princeton Tigers. Second NCAA tournament appearance. Schrader was back there. It's played off the boards. McIntyre got a stick on that. It looked like. But they're going to say no. And Lamaru slows it up. And will come back inside the Princeton end of the ice. Princeton's power play, Ben. That was their first opportunity. They did a nice job of moving the puck from side to side, getting some chances in front, but no rebounds. North Dakota does a great job on the PK, as you see their sticks in the NCAA, of clearing the net out in front. Anytime there's a rebound, that puck goes right down on the other end. Moore first to it for Princeton off that faceoff. Dushnerich just couldn't get to it. Robbie Pina played it away from Kaiser. Here's Martins. Martins fires the shot. Puck came loose and down low. Kalemba diving to cover up there is North Dakota with a just like that, a quick bang bang play there in and a chance created, and Columba denies him this time. Columba did a nice job there covering up that rebound. He dropped his stick actually and picked it up with his blocker hand, which has been instituted into North America ever since Dominic Hasek started doing it. 
years ago and dropping that stick and covering up with that blocker. Good job of goaltending there. It's the 13th shot on goal that Colombo has seen in the game. North Dakota, though, has beaten him twice. Fushnerik will stride after Genaway. Assistant referee went down far side over there. Fadoon played it away for Martens. Martins was coming there quick. Had him lined up. Moore now carries across the line against Genaway. Moore in front. Kushner up there. Got another chance. Couldn't finish it. Lamoureux got the glove on it. What a save there by Jean-Philippe Lamoureux. Well, Lamoureux does a nice job of staying in position here. As you'll see, the rebound comes out. It goes behind the net. It picked up again by Moore as he gets a second opportunity. Good job. And you'll see, watch Moore drive hard right. Throws the puck across the crease. Lamoureux holds tight to the post. Fighting in front there for the rebound. And watch what he does, but he doesn't overreact. He does a nice job of just getting in position to make this save. A lot of goalies would sprawl across the crease to try to make this save. Not Lamoureux to watch. He just stayed tight to the post. Knew positionally where he had to be and made a big time save. One of those been there, done that kind of plays, I suppose, for the senior. Absolutely, absolutely. A great goal, piece of goaltending right there. Two-year starter is Lamoureux. Jordan Parise was there his first couple of years. Lamoureux has turned into an outstanding netminder in college hockey. Here come the Sioux. They're trying to get that third goal in this game. They hope would shut the lights out, but who knows? In this tournament, you see strange things happen each and every year. In this game here, we've just moved past the three-minute mark. A long way to go. North Dakota up 2-0. Princeton with 29 shots, and somehow if the Tigers plan on hanging around here and Madison, they got to find a way to solve Lamaru. Colombo right. swept it around. The difference, Ben, has been that North Dakota, when they've gotten their opportunities, they've been able to finish. They've been able to find that way to get the puck past Colombo. Princeton has not found, like you said, the way to solve Lamaru. That was Kevin Laurie with a shot. Lamaru got the goal stick on that. Tigers certainly battling hard here. They have all day. Robbie Bina. Landis Stankovic was in there. Giveaway controlled by the Tigers, rolling off the stick there. Here comes Princeton down at the hash mark down there was Kevin Laurie. He's out on this line with Stankovic and Eric Pridham. Stankovic played it back for his line mate, Pridham. Pridham trying to shake Oshie. Pridham comes outside of the net, puck down there under a body as Oshie trying to dig it free. Finally got it and sends it on the ice. And that'll bring up a change for both. Good job of forechecking by Princeton and North Dakota. What they've done well is clear the front of their net. As you saw there, Princeton had a good opportunity. North Dakota's D just came in and cleared house, and there were three guys down for Princeton. They do that so well. Here's Wilson on the backhand, flipped it in front. Jubinville was going down the slot. McIntyre now. He couldn't get to it. Fighting Sue Vandevelde. He's hit along the wall on his way through. And he's so big and strong, he just kept going. Watkins and Kite down there. They couldn't get it. Fadoon starts it out. Jubinville now snaps the pass ahead. Ganaway down, and in front there was Jubinville again. Watkins backhands one out to Ganaway. Ganaway with two Tigers back just slobs one in on Columba. Five minute mark here in the third period. Genoway is kind of everywhere on the ice. He's such a skilled skater. He can go way up on the rush and get back before anyone else gets back on him. He is really a talented player. He's impressed me a lot in this game and his ability to move and play in all situations. Big time wheels from Genoway, and that was certainly the book in talking to a lot of people this week about Genoway. He said, you're going to see him up and down the ice, and certainly the scouting report right on because he's a fun player to watch. Here he is back now. Lamoureux with the glove hand there with a flash of leather with 14 and a half left here in this third period. Princeton Tigers so far today have thrown 31 shots at John Philippe Lamoureux. He stopped everyone and the Fighting Sioux lead 2-0. At one time or another, we all want to change the world in which we live. Make it a better place. Introducing the ITT Technical Institute School of Criminal Justice. At ITT Tech, we teach the fundamentals of the criminal justice system, along with the technology to help respond to and prevent crime. With a degree in criminal justice, you can pursue various career opportunities like surveillance, 
casework, and security. Technology is a powerful tool, but it's the people behind it who make the difference. ITT Technical Institute School of Criminal Justice, education for the future. Call 1-800-488-2075. That's 1-800-488-2075. Princeton Tigers down 2 nothing. Sean, they have thrown 31 shots at Jean-Philippe Lamoureux, and graphically we see it there, North Dakota, but you've talked about it, 13, but they have buried their opportunities, and Lamoureux has kept this game what it is, 2 nothing. Yeah, he's done a real nice job in goal tonight with 31 saves. I like his rebound control, especially as he's done a good job of distributing that puck when it comes off his pads to the corner. It does not come right out in front, which is so important. North Dakota's playing with fire here, though. You can't continue to allow this many shots on goal. I don't care who you're playing. Eventually, some of them are going to pop in the net. Look at Dave Hackstall behind the fighting suit bench there. Chorney gets position. Now going to get the puck to his teammate, Miller. Miller will stride in right wing side. Schrader back there along with Miller. Oshie trying to find it in feet. Skates down there, squirts free. Schrader's there. Oshie gives him a bump. T.J. Oshie, good work out of him. Hustling out there, keeping the puck inside the zone. Oshie couldn't get it this time. Schrader will try to get it around. Wilson there, and he gets it out. Here is Matt Arhantis. Arhantis can be dangerous with that puck. Shot comes in. Whistled wide right on the ice. Good setup by Arhantis as he came into the line beautifully with a drop pass right on the tape. It shot just wide by Mike Morris. He came in with a blast. Here's Oshi the other way. One on two, now one on three was Oshi. Laid it back. We got a penalty upcoming here with 13.37 left here in the third period. It's going to be an interference call, and the Tigers are going to plead their case to no avail, and they will be short-handed here as Wilson will serve two or less for Guy Godowski's squad. Yeah, Guy Godowski not happy with that call. It's an interference call. You look at the... The penalties today is Princeton has four, and North Dakota only has one penalty in this game so far today. So good discipline by Dave Haxtell's team as they go on the man advantage, and that could be the difference in this game. Here's Wilson. Interference 623. Here at the Cole Center, Madison, Wisconsin. Top seeded North Dakota, number four seed Princeton. Along with Sean Richland up here in the booth and Fred Pletch downstairs. My name is Ben Holden. It's great to be here. Great to have you with us wherever you're watching here today as our coverage of this Midwest Regional is underway. And the Midwest Regional, so many championships, 20 total between North Dakota, Denver, and Wisconsin. The latter of those two teams will meet next here from the Cole Center. That should be quite an environment. North Dakota trying to advance to the regional final. Oshie. Poked away by Arhantis. He was the first one to get to him, and then Peterson gave him a bump. Oshi, watched by Peterson once again, shielding him off is Oshi. TJ Oshi, bumped from behind by Schrader. Arhantis trying to get it out, can't. Squirts free, Arhantis, two on one developing here. They got a man going to the front. Jubinville, Torney though, went off his leg. And so the Sioux dodged the bullet there as those two working hard. Well, two talented forwards from Princeton broke free and a nice job of Chor by Chorney by eliminating that pass, Ben, or else that was a breakaway. Peterson with the puck. Sweeps it down the ice. Ben, I've noticed that Princeton has decided to bring pressure to North Dakota in the zone as they're not allowing them to get time and space, eliminating that time and space, which has helped to get the puck out of their zone. 25 seconds left in the power play chance. This is Watkins now, down low. Gave it off to Martins. Martins from the hash mark. Back up top, Marto slides it across for Genaway. They go back to Martins now. Martins in front, went through the slot. There's a shot, they score! They fired in, Duncan let her go, and it's three, nothing, North Dakota! Uh, that cross crease pass is absolutely devastating to the Princeton Tigers, as it's the second time they've left Duncan Open on the back door for a shot. I don't understand that as Duncan has clear to shoot the puck. Watch as his pass comes across. A nice job by Genaway again going down. Puck goes cross crease to Duncan as once again he's left wide open as Martins puts it right on the tape. Another saucer pass across crease. It just beats Kalemba between the blocker and the arm. And they got to eliminate 
Ryan Duncan on the backside, but for the Princeton Tigers, disappointing as they've been scored on three times now in the power play. Actually, the second one might not have been credited to the power play, but in any event, the man advantage is absolutely the big reason why North Dakota up in this game 3-0. So Ryan Duncan strikes again, the last two for him in the hockey game. His 11th multi-point game of the season, his fifth multi-goal game of the season for the reigning Hobie Baker winner, at least from 07. So now Princeton, as we come up on the nine-minute mark, in need of offense, and instantly, problem is they've thrown 31 shots at Lamaru, and they haven't beat him once. Not yet, here they come again, and that one was knocked away by Lamaru. Marno flipped it off the wall, right to Princeton it goes. And Ben, sometimes that's the difference in, in talent level of a team. A lot of talent on this Princeton team, but there is some serious high-end talent in North Dakota in Ryan Duncan. He finishes his chances. He had a couple opportunities to shoot the puck, and guess what? They went in the net. Here is Malone now, waiting for his teammates to get inside the zone. Kalemba gloves it, and he'll freeze it. 10.41 to go in the third. North Dakota with a 3-0 lead. Ryan Duncan is struck for two here today. You're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships from Madison, Wisconsin. Chip coverage presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up back here in Madison with 10.41 left here in the third inside this beautiful venue here in the capital city of Wisconsin, North Dakota. Ryan Duncan, the last two to stake his squad to a three-nothing lead on Princeton. 32 shots for Princeton, but no goals as of yet. Tigers, Arhantis up there. He's got McIntyre on the far side. Chorney into the corner with him. Swept out of there by Bina. Vandevelde's getting to the puck. Off the glass it goes. And the puck now is chopped at by Princeton. Torney surveys the ice, lays it back for Robbie Bina. Vandevelde got a stick on that as the Sioux will change up. And nobody wants to touch here. As Vandevelde touched it with a high stick, and finally the official says, that's enough, we'll stop it and drop it. They look at the captain there for North Dakota, Ryland Kipe, as his role on the team is obviously team leader as a captain, but he does a good job shorthanded on the PK, and really a, a guy who's accepted a role as being a physical presence. He does have 14 points on the year, but he comes out and lays the body every chance he has. He never passes up a check, and as his coach said, he's the hardest worker on the team. Yep, no doubt about it. Of course, playing for the proud program in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Came out of pretty good school, Notre Dame there in Saskatchewan before he made his way down to Grand Forks. Face off to the right of Lamaru here. Shot right in, Lamaru is able to make the stop as it came in from the left point there off the stick of Godlewski. And Ryan Duncan, Sean, let's, uh, let's take a look at his resume so far here today. It's been pretty impressive for the senior with two in his 11th multi-point game of the season and his fifth multi-goal game of the season. Yeah, Ryan Duncan's been left alone a little bit on the back door a couple times and did a good job of lifting that puck over the glove and a nice job of burying that shot. You know, the tough thing for Duncan this year is you come back as a repeat Hobie winner and you know teams are keen on you and when you get opportunities, you've got to take advantage of them. He's done, certainly done that tonight, Ben. Move past the midway point. Third period of play, North Dakota. Such a terrific second half to their season. And they have been terrific under their head coach. 18-4-3 in the second half. 64-25-10 and 10 in his career. And Ryan Duncan, let's now visually take a look at the videotape evidence of his day so far. And he's been doing a good job of getting it shelf, getting that puck up when the goalie goes down, and then he rips one between the arm and the body of Kalemba as you get the up top view of his goal. And he's a talented, talented player, Ryan Duncan. Two for Duncan. Fred Fletch downstairs aboard. Freddie. You know, guys, it's a short list of Hobie Baker winners that have returned to school, just five of them. Ryan Duncan, of course, has won the last two. Marty Sertich from Colorado College. Ryan Miller from Michigan State, now with the Buffalo Sabres. But Ryan Duncan, the 22-year-old from Calgary, certainly would not rest on his laurels. Coaching staff says he's at the rink two or three mornings every week. 
working on little things because as Sean said you know he's a target this season guys. He has been a target and, and that's a really difficult thing as a player when you know every single game you're going to be out against the top D men the top checking unit that they have and, and in the WCHA it's a tight league you saw goals were down this year in the entire league because there's such talent out there defensively. That shot never got through by Princeton. Coaching nine left in the game. Lifted through center. Hagel striding after it. He's taken off the puck. Is Hagel swept around by the Sioux. Bushnerik couldn't get to it. It'll stay inside the fighting Sioux end here. Fadoon, he's bumped by Radke. Jones stepping up down there with Kaiser. Those two. And Zajac will get it and play it off the glass, but he couldn't get it out. Fadoon kept it in. Redirected in front. Kaiser is denied. And Lamaru comes up with another stop. Boy, he's been just sharp tonight as that one kind of wobbled into him and he didn't know whether to come after it or stay put. He stayed put and made a big save as J.P. Lamaru 34 shots against and he still has not seen one go by him. He has been perfect so far in the game. Finley. First to it, Oshi. Duncan ahead. Oshi's just going to carry it. Duncan waits for him. Gives it up now. Duncan back. Oh, what a passing play. Miller went to Oshi, but he could not finish. That would have been highlight reel material all over the place. What an opportunity for the Sioux. Miller lost an edge. Swept it back. It goes to Jubinville, though. Jubinville. Center in deep, and he'll go to the bench for the change. Fired right in front. Nice stick there by Genoway to block that centering attempt. Genoway is always around the puck. You notice but anytime there's a loose puck opportunity, it seems that his body or his stick or something's in the way. Very talented player for Dave Axel's team. Vandevelde gets it, lays it back. The Ryland Kite. Those two now in tight quarters down there. Buck will squirt free now. Kite trying to get to it. Can't. It'll bounce through center and Bina will stride back after it with our Hontis watching him. Bina goes down awkwardly. Arhantis there watching him. Arhantis then tangled up there. They both get up to their feet. Bina and Arhantis do now. Arhantis. Bina watching him. Vandevelde sent it high and it goes out to center. Chorney with the puck. He'll bring it in. Fire the shot. Hit him up high. Puck loose in front. Behind the net now. Controlled by Princeton. Peterson missed on the pass. An icing called. And the clock is stopped with 6.43 remaining here in this third period. You're watching the NCAA Men's Hockey Championships here in the Midwest Regional for Madison. 43 to go as North Dakota 3, Princeton nothing here in this Midwest Regional semifinal. The NCAA Frozen Four moves to Denver, Colorado in April. The semifinals begin Thursday, April 10th, 6 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information on the 2008 NCAA Frozen Four, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And a look inside the eyes there of Zane Kalemba, the goaltender for Princeton, as North Dakota wins another draw. That shot did not miss by much. Clean win right back to Mardo, and he let her go quickly. Mardo back there, playing defense, poked it off the stick there, at least out of the way of Kyle Hagel, number 25, and now Moore's got to retreat back to get it. He's back there with Fadoon. Captain Moore, pass knocked away by North Dakota. Fadoon now approaching six to play here in this matchup. Here's a chance. Hagel well off the mark, though. He'll get it back. Hagel, bad angle. Lamaru says, I got it. And then some extracurricular afterwards. Out, right out to the right side of that North Dakota net. Well, I think Lambert is going to get a penalty here as he slashed the Princeton player in front right after. He did a good job of grabbing that puck, come across the crease, but he got a little frustrated with the with the Princeton player in front. I believe it was Kevin Kaiser. Take a look at the replay. As the puck goes back to the side, he loves it, and then Kaiser's in there. He gives him a little stick, and well, right back at you. Initially, the stick got Lambert in the left upper. Oh yeah, Kaiser slashed him. Yeah, Kaiser yeah. slashed him too. He kind of gave him back a little bit, so he could call. They're both in. They're both in. That's the correct call by the referee. They're both getting penalties, of course. That's right. Lambert can't actually go on right. the bench, although Princeton would like it if he would. <laughs> they would love it. <laughs> 606 left. They've thrown 34 shots at him, and there is Kaiser in the penalty box. So yes, indeed, the two teams each get a minor penalty here. 
And Princeton's got to find a way to get Lamoureux off his game, and maybe that's it. Maybe you need to get in his head a little bit because he is stopping everything, and he's done a great job of covering up rebounds, pushing rebounds to the corner, and making that difference maker type save. Coming off a weekend in which he stopped 60 of 64 in the WCHA tournament. Oshie off the glass, funny bounce down there off the stanchion. Here's a chance, and that was fired right on the ice. That was Wilson. And look out down below as lifted over the glass and out of play by North Dakota here with 549 remaining. Robbie Bina there, and his guy's still with 143 to four on four. As that puck got lifted out of the stands, we, we had some excitement up here. But Robbie Bean is a big defender, uh, uh, not the biggest defenseman on his team, but he, boy, does he play physical, Ben. Every chance he gets, he's in there eliminating players, playing physical. Coach's type of player as he gives it everything he's got when he's on the ice. Hometown product out of Red River High School is Robbie Bina. That's um, an, uh, sorry, Ben, that's an yep. amazing stat. There's three Grand Forks players on this team. So pretty easy recruiting for these guys. Yep. <laughs> Robbie Bina, been through so much in his career. Great to see young men persevere. And there's a shot that got through some traffic there. And Lamaru was able to find that one. Well, that's exactly what they need to do. Get shots through with traffic, Ben, as you said, as the goalie is out for Princeton. Indeed, the goalie is Kalemba with 523 remaining in the contest. So Guy Godowski and his squad have to find a way to score here. Down three. They have not been able to solve Lamaru yet. And there is the Young coach played his college hockey in the WCHA, Colorado College. First experience for him in this tournament. Moore thought about it. Oshie watching him look out. Oshie, nice steal, flipped it back. Duncan's already got two. Ryan Duncan, make it three! The hat trick for Duncan! Wow, what a big play by TJ Oshie on the point here as Mike Moore would like to have this back as he Grab the puck on the blue line, and TJ Oshie just did a great job of challenging him. As he comes out, doesn't go for the fake. Oshie with that long stick of his reaches out, stops it, and he gives it to the right guy as Ryan Duncan finds the empty net for his third of the game. And as you see the heads flying on the ice. What a great job by Duncan to continue along and do a good job. His 17th goal of the season. He gets the hat trick, Ben. And for North Dakota, it is the first hat trick, and the last was scored by Andrew Kozak against Denver back on February 15th of this year. So Ryan Duncan comes through when his team needs him most here in round one semifinals of this Midwest Regional. And it's a 4-0 Fighting Sioux lead. 2-1, to one, Sean, the shots in favor of Princeton, Lamaru and Duncan. We talked about those two guys in the open, and certainly they were key and primetime guys here today. Well, they've led this team today all day long. I think Lamaru, this may be one of his better games of the year. I mean, 35 saves so far tonight, and they've been pretty quality chances that Princeton's had. And he's done it in a variety of situations as the Fighting Sioux looking for more. Vandevelde followed up the play there. Still four on four here for another 25 seconds. I do like the call by Guy Godowski pulling the goalie, though. You're not scoring goals. You have a chance to get a man advantage, a five-on-four situation. There's a lot of people on the ice. I think that was a smart call by the coaching staff of Princeton to try to get a goal, try to generate some offense, get the puck behind this goaltender. And Guy Godowski, he wants to win this game. He, he knows there's no tomorrow nope. if you don't score a goal there. Nope. He talked about with us yesterday. He said, our guys just want to keep playing. They want to show up and practice again on Monday, and certainly uh, his his young men are glad to be here, but they have certainly not disappointed in terms of the amount of chances they've generated. They've just been shut down by a goalie who's played outstanding in Lamaru. Peterson shot, Lamaru saw that. Traffic in front, 4.05 left, and Lamaru makes save number 36 on the afternoon. This is a good job by Eric Freedom driving the net. The senior, six foot senior from Belmont, Mass. Big kid, 220. Drives the net real hard on this play and stops in front of Lamaru. It does a good job. That's what you have to do. You have to drive the net looking for that rebound. Unfortunately, the guy in net's got 36 saves and he's not giving up any rebounds. Anything that hits him, Ben, it's not coming off his body. First in the country in the goals against Jeff Zatkoff from Miami. Number two, Richard Bachman from Colorado College was three. And 
Lamaru trailing Jeff Zatkoff in save percentage by percentage points coming into this game. Here's Zajac, threw it through the middle there, between the circles in the slot. Hagel is deck penalty upcoming. North Dakota, a little bit too aggressive there, and the penalty is going to be assessed here to the Fighting Sioux, and it's going to be Matt Fratton who will head to the sin bin and serve time. 3.41 left in the game here in Madison. Next week on the best damn sports show, period. Wednesday. Get a $5,000 discount and 0% financing for 60 months on 2008 F-150 Super Cab. And Dota here in downtown Madison, Wisconsin, the capital city here in North Dakota, three minutes and 41 seconds away from advancing to the Midwest Regional Final here. Princeton outshot the Sioux, two to one, but it's not gonna matter. Another goal for North Dakota, and it's now a five nothing Sioux lead, and they have plenty of support here in Madison. And you look at Princeton, and their season is about to come to an end. Well, Princeton has had a great game. They've done a good job of forechecking and generating opportunities, but Kai Godowski once again trying to pull the goalie to get an opportunity, and Shea Genoway, who's been everywhere this entire game, does a great job of the uh, the old 180-foot shot. So Genoway's had a very productive day. That'll be his eighth goal of the season, productive in a lot of ways, but he comes through and gets on the score sheet with the goal. You're in the final three minutes of this hockey game. Kalemba's back in the net. Juvenville fires. Lamaru was there. He has been so good as Lamaru. Moore gloved it. Knocked it down, I should say, with a high stick, and the clock stopped with 3.08 to go. And that was the first rebound we've seen come right out directly in the crease as he mishandled that one. And what happens? The Princeton player misses it. As this puck gets shot through, look at the rebounds right there. Oh, and he just missed it. As Brett Wilson, the leading goal scorer on the team, could not find it. J.P. Lammer with 37 saves today. I, I, I bet you that Princeton would not have thought that we got 37 shots on goal in this game tonight. 40th start of the season for Lammer. So the Princeton Tigers here. Time is certainly the enemy. North Dakota has this one sewn up here, leading 5 0. And you got to take your hat off to these Princeton Tigers for the season they had with the number of victories they had overall, number of victories they had in their conference. And for them, a great accomplishment. Getting here to this Midwest Regional pass. Out in front, off the post! Oh, there was the chance to end the shutout for Lamaru. And the iron is standing in the way. Yeah, Brad Schrader ripped that shot a good opportunity that he was unable to bury but perfect setup from behind the net and unfortunate for the Tigers that that one did not go in. Carried in again throw some more rubber at JP Lamaru 38 shots now. And here's a look back at the last opportunity for Princeton. A great setup nice pass out in front by Landis Stankovic and Brad Schrader's there for the chance and it just catches the post. I think that signifies their day. They've had a lot of opportunities but just nothing's been able to get by them. And look at the view from up top. Watch how Lamaru moves so nicely and he comes across to make a, a even though it hit the pipe he still had it covered. Brad Schrader six foot three 205 pounds man did he let that one rip. And Kalemba. Terrific run to his regular season and the postseason in the ECAC. North Dakota able to finish their chances. Kozak got him going in the opening period. Shea Genaway had the assist on that. Mardo also on the power play. Tipped in front. Arhantis was there. This is Van de Velde. He'll backhand one to the near side of the rink for Zajac. 90 seconds to go here. Hagel's speed ends up on the stick of Kaiser. That was whistled right through the blue paint area. Zajac slips it ahead to Malone, and Malone will fire it in with Princeton's Fadoon slides it ahead for Kaiser. 
Kushnerik trying to get to that rolling puck. It was knocked away by Bina. 60 seconds left here in this contest. For North Dakota, a game being the number one seed, Ben, that they're supposed to win. They came out much like their coach said. They were businesslike. They did a good job on the man advantage. I personally think that was the difference in this game. When they had the power play chances, they were able to bury the puck and the score is 5 nothing. but the majority of their goals were scored in the man advantage. Now, they didn't give them the one in the second goal because it just expired, but basically it was a power play goal. Two for four. Here's a chance. They score! There's a goal by McIntyre to ruin the shutout for Lamoureux with 32 seconds left for the big fella. Yeah, one of the things that the Princeton coaching staff said was watch Cam McIntyre shoot the puck when he gets it. He's got an absolute rocket. When he got in the slot, he made no mistake, went low stick side, that 18-inch number that we always talk about in hockey, just above the pad, and he lets it rip. That is a goal scorer's goal as Cam McIntyre gets his 13th goal of the season. Career high, 13th of the season. Good for Princeton. They've worked hard all game. They've got 38 shots on goal now. We kind of felt like they deserved one almost. 31st point of the year for McIntyre. You look back last year at just 13, so a terrific season. He's really blossomed the sophomore. But North Dakota is going to advance to this Midwest Regional Final. Inside of 20 seconds remaining here in the third. Final 10 seconds ticking away here in Madison. North Dakota fighting Sioux. Victors today, 5-1 is the final score. And North Dakota will await the winner of Denver and Wisconsin. Tomorrow night here in Madison, those teams will meet. So the Sioux advance to the regional final. North Dakota came out today with a plan that they knew Coach's goals, he knew he had to slow down Princeton's speed. He knew that his team had to come out with a lot of passion and energy, and I think Princeton played a great game. Congratulations to both teams. North Dakota, the champion. We'll be back with more here from the Kohl Center. Stay with us. We're back after this.